I know you retired in 2020, yep. 27 fights, you had a very, very good career. I mean, yep. since you've been ret retired though, Jamie, what, what have you been up to? I was um, a bit lost. I was trying to uh, focus and um, yeah, you start using your time sometimes in the wrong way if you ain't occupied. And um, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a goal set, you know, I, try, I need something that m motivates me, you know. This BKFC, you know, gave me a bit between my teeth and it gave, gave me a new lease of life. World-class boxer Jamie Cox took on the likes of George Groves and John Ryder. He now is transitioning into the brutal world of bare-knuckle boxing. His up-and-coming fight this weekend has been cancelled, but I still wanted to talk to him about the transition, the mindset and the training. Be happy, never content. Okay, welcome back to another week of my podcast, Stephen Sully Study. Um, I've only interviewed uh, my guests for a part two and a few only a few times in the last four years and uh jamie cox is someone that i've admired i've been watching your boxing career we've had a good conversation before over i think it was zoom yeah and uh but i'd never met you in person and now that i know you're going down a different route different path which we're going to get get onto in a minute i thought it only makes sense to reach out to you get you down to the studio and have, have a face-to-face -face conversation so jamie cox welcome back to the steven sully study for part two Pleasure, pleasure to be here, Steve, mate. It's, uh, mate, your, your uh, podcasts are real good. They're, they're, they're all intriguing and I like what I enjoy watching them. They're, they're uh, inspirational and informative. So, um, yeah, thanks for having me down here. For, for, thank you very, very much, Jamie. It was only, um, I was watching our previous podcast and uh, there were some really, really good snippets in there. Yeah. But just, it's a little bit sad, really. When you, when you see professional athletes, no matter whether they're boxers, UFC fighters or they're footballers, etc., it's a little bit sad because if they're not doing so much punditry or they're not doing a business, you kind of start over time forgetting about them. And yeah. where they've been so good in the ring, like yourself, George Groves, etc. I, 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 I'm like, oh no, I want to. I kind of want to see him back, but <laughs> you, you go through kind of like a different stage in your life. Yep. I know you retired in 2020. Yep. 27 fights you had a very very good career I mean talk about your amateur career I'm not going to tell say everything that you, you won because we covered that last time but Commonwealth Games gold yep. ABA yep. gold you won that 27 fights I mean you fought the likes of George Groves and some some very very good fights there at the time when you was a pro WBO European super middleweight champion uh, you also were I've got written down here WA, WBA Continental mm. and then you know the career come to, to to an end and we was having a conversation last time about your career the positivity how you train uh, nutrition you know how you become the best version of yourself etc yeah, yeah. now I want to talk, to talk to you about kind of those things as well but the reason why you're going down a new path new sport yeah. since you've been ret retired though Jamie what, what have you been up to? I uh, mean, not a lot really. I was um, a bit, a bit lost. I was trying to uh, focus. I've got a, a good friend in Tony Davis. He's uh, taking uh, the, the 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 boxing team in Bahrain in the Middle East. He's uh, sort of uh, evolved the dynamic out there and, and, and building up the, uh, the the national team. And uh, I was looking to get out there to uh, get involved with the training, the the, the squad out there. Um, yeah. My mum. Unfortunately, he fell a bit ill, and 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 things didn't really move on from there. But you know, fingers crossed, my mum's uh, battling that now. And um, yeah, so I was a little bit. Uh, sure you'll get thanks that. very much. And um, I was, uh, yeah, I you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a goal set. You know, I try. I need something that motivates me. You know, I tried to um, invest my money in what I did from the boxing. You know, and uh, in in properties and. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I was looking for my new, you know, obviously I'm not a millionaire or nothing, but, you know, I'm trying to use what I have. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, I needed that, something to, 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 to spite me. And um, I, I was with my friend and he was, he mentioned it, um, uh, a traveling friend of mine, uh, <clears throat> Jimmy Jimmy Coyle, and he was talking about this uh, B, BK boxing and I, it, it gave me some like uh, it gave me a bit between my teeth, and I ended up speaking to um, Dave Feldman and uh, our the BKFC, which is really exploding now. And uh, here we are, ready to uh, go on my new chapter. Yeah, I mean, you've literally come from Victoria straight to our studio here in yeah. Soho, and I, I do, do want to talk about the press conference. I want to talk about your opponent. I want to talk about your ambitions. Why? Why you've gone down? You know, going down this path. Yeah. What you want to achieve from that particular sport etc um 
Part of the reason why I mentioned about your retirement is because a lot of athletes, again, I mean, there's so many to mention, but, you know, it's quite clear to see that you've had so much of the highs, you know, winning, you know, winning fights, yep. being in like high profile fights, making money, being adored by fans, being adored by, you know, the presenters, you know, yeah. being, being, being the center of attention. And then suddenly when you retire, that goes. And, you know, a lot of athletes can fall in the path of doing drugs, yep. you know, drinking, depression. Yep. Did you ever sort of at any moment feel like you're going to go down that path or you could feel yourself sliding, maybe and thinking, Jesus, if I don't start doing yeah. something now, I could be, not game over for me, but yeah. I could really be in a dark place? Uh, yeah, I, I ended up, you know, you, you you ended up just living normal, do you know what I mean? It, well, to, you know, my, my, my surroundings, that's around me every day. So, <laughs> yeah. not every day, not every day, sorry. But like, you know, it's it, around everyone every day, you know? And um, well, yeah, you, you go to the pub and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And not, I wasn't a drinker before. And then I ended up, so, you know, you, you, you have to, you're trying to utis, utilize your time and uh, I wasn't doing it in the right direction. So, um yeah, this is what I needed. You know, I like to, I like to be fresh. I like to keep my mind clean. When I'm, when my mind's clean, I've every everything else is clean in my life and uh, good. So, uh, yeah, you start start you uh, using your time sometimes in the wrong way if you ain't occupied. And um, yeah, yeah, this BKFC, you know, gave me a bit between my teeth and gave, gave me a new lease of life. Yeah, reason why I, I touch on things like this yeah. is never to antagonise or to no. get under the skin of my um, of my guests, but. I like to think that a lot of my, some of my viewers are going to be young kids, females, males, yeah. whoever, and they're, they're listening to the podcast, they're listening to the guests, and they think, right, I've gone down this path. Yeah. If this high profile, profile person can go for it and then get out of it, surely, yeah. surely I can as well. Yeah. So, I mean, look, I've, I'm no angel. I've yeah. done some bad things in yeah. my life, yeah. and I've, I've done silly things in my life, even, even recently, and I sort of reflect on it and think, why the fuck did I do that? That was so embarrassing. That's yeah. not good for my own brand. And and I feel slightly gutted that that happened. But, you know, hey-ho, it's life. And, 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 and that's what happens. As long as we learn from it and move on, that's, that's what right. counts. That's right. But as a pro, you know, pro boxer, so I asked the same question to Ryan Burnett. He was two-time world champion. Irish, as you well know, yep. very, very successful, fighting with Adam Booth. And he yeah, said the moment he retired, not so much drugs, but it was the drink. Yeah, he started yeah. drinking a lot, a lot. And then I said, well, how did you overcome it? He said, for a while, I, I didn't think I, I could. I was I was in the trap of drinking every single day. And then he got to a point where was like, enough's enough. I'm going to start focusing on my yeah, gym. Yeah. And then he turned it all around. With you, I know you're going down this path, but... How long was it going on for? I mean, was it getting really, really serious, or was it something you had under, under control? Could you tell me a bit more about it? Uh, you know, I just, you know, I had things. Uh, I, I was trying to set new, uh, <clears throat> new ventures, but yeah, you, you, you always, always spending more time than I should have doing stuff like that, you know, and um, yeah, you know, but, but, but. But we don't, you know, me, I'm not a fool. You know, you don't need a counsellor. You don't need no one to, to, you know what's right and wrong. You know what I mean? So all you need to do is just put yourself back into check. Yeah. And, and, and um, yeah, me, you know, I just, uh, I needed some something to inspire, you know, to, 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 to give me some focus on. And this is one thing that, that's it. Put, put the, put the piece in the pit, the jigsaw for me. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's it. But just, just back to how I was, you know, everything's bad if it's not, you know, everything, food, everything, you know, shit, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, sweets, whatever you want to call, you know, everything, just, you got to try and just have some discipline. Discipline is a major thing. And when I'm disciplined, this, everything falls into place. Well, it's exactly, there's it's two things that reminds me of two people in boxing. So you've got Tyson Fury, the iconic, you know, becoming yeah. world champion, going in depression, taking drink and yeah. drugs, blowing right up and then losing it, losing all the weight again, coming back and become a world champion again. Yeah. And what he, what he defines is the moment you focus on your training, well-being, good people around you and your goals, you become a really good, good quality person and then you can start achieving stuff. And another person I think about who likes a drink and he admits he likes a drink yeah. is Ricky Hatton. Yeah. Look at him now. I'm, I know the fight is called off with Barrero, was it? That's right, Barrero, yeah. I think it's pushed back until November, but let's be totally honest. And I like Ricky Hatton, and I'm, I would like to be as respectful as I can, but I'm yeah. also honest. You know, he, he was slightly overweight. Yeah. Uh, he was still training a bit, yeah. but he wasn't in the best shape. Yeah. But now he's got the bit between his teeth, coining what you just said. Yeah. He's like, he's redefined himself. He's become this athlete again. Yeah. And 
I think I think this this proves the point when you've got proper goals yeah. and you've got a real urge to become or or, or, or to prove everybody wrong, the doubters. Yeah. Everything falls into place. How much yeah, would you support that? Definitely, definitely. And uh, I, I think it happens to a lot of sports people when they, you know, because you're so occupied and consumed by your time in training and the sport itself. And um, for me, it ain't really about the, like, of course it comes with it, but I don't really care about that. I care about the providing and uh, the, what I enjoy, the sport and the, the goal of it to be the best or the champion or if you be it, you know. And, yeah. um, you know, that's what the, the journey of it, that, that, that's what, that's what, uh, get, you know, gets me, uh, fueled up. And, um, I think when you lose something like that, you, you know, and there's so much, it's quite, uh, uh, a high voltage sport, you know, as well, especially that. And then it all just goes, I think, you know, you can, you can get carried away. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, like you said, with, uh, hat, you know, it's good for the, with, with Hatton and stuff like that, you know what I mean? You can see. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you're just on the segment of Hatton. I mean, I really admire it. I mean, I've done boxing, yeah. nowhere near to your level. I wasn't pro, I had an amateur career and done yeah. some, what they call unlicensed fights. So I respect anyone of any level, you know, the moment they get in the ring, no matter what, what their age, their background, their gender, I absolutely respect them because yeah. I know what sacrifice goes into it. But there is a, the other side where <clears> people are saying, but you're a bit too old now, Ricky. Like, I think it's a bit kind of dangerous. But I mean, what, what, what's your view on that? Um, it depends if, if he's good, if his people around him, you know, care. They, they, he must, well, he's not, not stupid. He'd be asking them. It's like, he looks fine to me. It's just if, it's dangerous walking across the road, you know? So, uh, yeah. you know, it's, um, but if it's, yeah, you know, I, everything's dangerous, you know what I mean? So uh, if you, it's just, if, if he wants to do it, l l let him do it, you know? Yeah, fair. It's all controlled. It's a controlled sport, simple as. Yeah, and, and I, I guess this is not a, a real genuine fight. It's it's an exhibition. But I was thinking about this the other day as well. If I was a former pro world world champion yeah. and I was known as a bit of a Mexican type fighter, which yeah, Ricky yeah. Hatton is. Yeah, unbelievable. And suddenly you're having this exhibition where you're you're going probably about 70%, 80%, but then you suddenly, suddenly get clocked <laughs> on your chin. You probably, the alpha male instinct's going to take over and want yeah. to have a tear up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, where do you draw the line at that point? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, uh, they, they, but they, but but when you're a high level sports people as Barrera and Hatton, I think they can control it. You know, they they they, they you know they they're very disciplined people, and you know I know it's an exhibition, but I think it would get a bit more than an exhibition if them two fought. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you know we're like Floyd Mayweather has kind of in my my view, love him or hate him, he set the blueprint for boxers now moving forward to either get people to cross over from. Yeah. Uh, I know MMA like uh, Conor McGregor in yeah. 2017 to go over to boxing and fight him or there was another guy I think in Japan who was like a also MMA but there's taekwondo fighters etc and it looks like he's having a lot of fun still yeah. making money and still keeping himself relevant and there, there, there are people on social media that I read all the time say, oh, he shouldn't be doing that, he's ruining his legacy. But at the same time if he was a footballer and he was going to a charity match and he was getting paid five million quid for example yeah, yeah, yeah. no one give a shit because yeah. it's a football match and yeah, everyone yeah. said well it's just playing a charity football match but the moment you're a fighter it's almost like oh you shouldn't be doing that because that's going to ruin your reputation yeah what's your view on it you know should he be doing it should people be doing it like mike tarson should ricky hatton be do doing it or or is it something they you know the moment they hang out the gloves they should just hang out the gloves uh, i think the bank balance says they should be doing it so uh <laughs> yeah but um you know it's I, I, I think it's you know but there, 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 there's, there's going to be um, a market for it so uh, yeah if there's a market for it if there wasn't a market for it they wouldn't be doing it so I think it's fine yeah yeah and um, what do you think about this whole Jake Paul Logan Paul crossing over into into boxing I mean yeah. Jake Paul now is fighting Tyson Fury's brother Tommy yeah. Fury, Fury yeah I I want to think and I want to believe Tommy Fury is going to win it yeah and I really hope he does I really really hope he does. Yeah. But there's something telling me about how confident Jake Paul is that I don't know. I, I, you know, I really <laughs> hope he doesn't do the embarrassing thing, which is to beat Tommy Fury and and especially knock him out. I mean, where, where do you see that fight going? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's um, a tough one because you know, obviously Jake Paul's better than what what he's uh, portrayed as, and obviously he comes from the YouTube, so that's what makes it more. But he brings he brings a whole big market, you know, 
the sport's evolving. These things are happening nowadays, and uh, I just hope Tommy Fury does it. And um, you know, but um, yeah, I think it's good for the sport. It must be made. This is the new generation. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Right. I want to ask you about this because this is a chapter in your life which I think is for lot, lots of lessons. Now, I'm not going to do the yeah. thing where I'm going to dig into it and ask you very uncomfortable questions because yeah, no it's kind of it's not my business. <laughs> and it's more about how did you deal with it at the time. So yeah. I'm going to read you a headline, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is from the Irish Mirror. Yeah, you probably know yeah, what I'm going yeah. to ask you. Yeah. Boxing champion Jamie yeah. Cox Jow throttling an exotic dancer girlfriend. And yeah. you got you got basically jailed for six months. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm reading this out yeah. to you is because... During this time, you were WBO, European super middleweight champion. And it must have felt like at that present point in time that you had the world at your feet. I mean, yeah. becoming WBO, European super middleweight champion, bearing in mind in, in, in that present point in time in your life, the, 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 the division of super middleweights in boxing was absolutely electric alive. Yeah, yeah. George Groves, yeah. Ryder, James Agal. I mean, Fox, there was yeah. so many, yeah. so many big profile fights there, and even I don't know. It was 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 um, Carl Frost still fighting at that yeah, present point so, in yeah, time. Yeah. So there was a lot of avenues you could have gone down, and then suddenly a curveball comes into your life, and you're kind of taken out of the scenario for six months. Mm. I mean, obviously you're going to remember that part in your life. I'm not going to go into the incident, but going to jail for six months. Tell me what that was like. I mean, did you did you become very low? And how did you get through it mentally? Um, yeah, you know, it was um, <clears throat> obviously it all got overturned in the end, and yeah. uh, it got overturned. You know, this it is through an appeal. Yeah, yeah, and um, it all got overturned, and uh, you know, did, 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 oh, we know the real real story. Yeah. You know, some people hustle different ways, and that's how some people, you know, you get involved and. In, uh, where you shouldn't be involved, but um, yeah, it was um, yeah, of course it was it was hard because my family, you know, for me, did you have a daughter, a daughter at the time? No, not no. at the time. And um, yeah, it was hard because of my, my my family. I know how much it hurt them. So you know, but 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 um, you just have to adapt. You know, this is this is life. It's another another curveball, like you said, and there's nothing you can do about it, and you just got to deal with it, and you got to look. It gives you time to think about what you're gonna do when you when you come out and the positivity from it. So um, yeah, yeah, but 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 yeah, no one wants to go there. I didn't want to be there. I knew one. I shouldn't have been there. And uh, yeah, touch wood, touch wood. It will um, come out to fruition. Do you know it's like being high profile and also especially <clears throat> being a fighter and yeah. the prisons are the, quite notorious in some prisons for being violent you know yeah, yeah and then a high profile boxer walks in yeah, and it's almost yeah. like i'll stay away from him because he, he knows how to handle himself but then some people are like no actually i want to make a name for myself yeah, so i'm yeah. going to try it was was there any kind of conflict with people in there did they ever uh, come and approach you or was you kind of left you to, to 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 you know to your own devices in there i wasn't in there too too long um because of the the, the appeal but um no, they, they, things happen in there, don't they? But no, I was fortunate enough, nothing too much happened in there for me. I, I knew some people in there and um, yeah, it was, you know, but no no one's a be there. No one's a be, you know, if you want to be there, you're silly. So um, yeah, yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, it was an eye opener and um, yeah, you know, I, that's in the past now and I'm trying to just stay, stay on the right track of life. De definitely. Yeah, yeah, look, all yeah. of these things, no matter how good or how bad they are, they all factor in towards your success later on in your life. And listen, they're, they're, they're good yep. life lessons right. to pass down to your family members and, and to demonstrate that I'm, I'm yep. a WBO, a European super mate, a middleweight champion. I probably had, yeah. you probably had people throwing endorsements at you and wanting to be all around you. And then suddenly, you know, life throws you a curveball and you, and, and you yep. go off down a different path. And I mean, Mayweather's done it. Uh, Mike Tyson's done it. Yeah. It's, it's happened so many times, yeah, yeah. and I, I just wanted to understand yeah. the psychology that was going through your mind at the, that yeah. present point in time. So anyway, you're, look, you're going down this new path, which is a brand new sport. Is it, is it some 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 of you know, I actually watched like Alfie Best said, you know, these things that they they, they 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 carve out here, they carve these little things, they they cut in you and they mould you, and you know, it's how, it's how you deal with it. Definitely, Alfie definitely. Best, I was watching it. It was a great podcast. Yeah, yeah thank you, thank yeah. you. So uh, BKFB, it's called, or is it FC? BKFC, BKFC. That's it. Yep. So you're making your debut July the sixteenth at the Wembley OVO Arena, which is obviously in Wembley. Yep. yep. I know you're fighting a guy called. I got it down right in here somewhere. 
Uh, remind me of his name. Kieran Thomas. Kieran Thomas. Thomas. Okay. Yeah. I don't know much about this guy. I was trying to look him up on the internet. Yeah. What, what What's his background? He's an ex-pro boxer. I think he used to fight on the road. Uh, I think he had about 30 fights. So uh, like a journeyman. So, yeah, so we both come from the boxing world, you know, and uh, this is the first one in it. And, um, you know, big respect to him. You know, I respect every, every everyone I box, you know, to get in there, big, big gooners. So, um, you know, I'm just preparing right, getting ready for this and um, trying to put on a good show for everyone. Good, good man. So, um, so, so the obvious question is, right? Um, if you were going to come out of retirement, because you're this is not boxing, but this is basically like boxing, yeah. but literally with no protection over your, over your hands. Yeah. People would ask the question: If you're going to do this, why wouldn't you just go back to boxing? Because you could probably get paid really good money. Uh, people would sign you up straight away because yeah. of your profile, because of your background. <clears throat> why? take on the bare knuckle world rather than just stick to what you know because it's obviously you get more uh superficial marks than, than boxing but boxing you get more long-term uh damage you know and um but uh it's it's five two minute rounds not 12 three minute rounds whereas i'm getting a little bit older now and um yeah i'm still able to do it but five twos is a lot better for me and um yeah i'm you know i'm, I'm performing in the gym uh, the money's the same, and and what I did it is because it gave me it, it spanned my head when I got when I heard about it. So mm. you know that if if it does that to you, then that's what you should focus on. I, I know uh, the only person I because I, I, I've not followed the bare knuckle fighting world for 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 very long. I, yeah. To be honest, the only real reason why I've got interest in it recently is because number one, you're stepping into it, <laughs> and also uh, Michael Venom Page, which, yeah, yeah. which I find him a very, very interesting fighter. And when he announced he's going into it, yeah. I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy. And yeah. when I actually looked up this particular brand, BKFC, it's the world's fastest growing combat sport in the yeah, world. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, I mean, this is, this is serious stuff. Pulling Man and RG made a transition a few years ago into it for one fight and he got beat. Um, has there been many good pro boxers going from the professional rankings as a good thoroughbred pro yeah. over to bare knuckle and becoming a bit of a household name in that sector um, i'm not too sure because i'm 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 new to the the, the 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 sport now as well and uh i haven't followed too much of the um the bkfc but it is you know i, I think it's going to be a major player is it's really you know because you're getting a mix of the the ufc fighters the mma fighters sorry the boxers the hard cases you put him in there, and I think it's uh, intriguing. So you know, because you're allowed a little bit. It's like a little bit of grappling. They're gonna. It's gonna work better for the um, MMA guys. The stand up is gonna work better for the boxing, and and and, and so forth. So um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a good, a good mix, and yeah. yeah, and I think it's. I think it's gonna blow up. Um, if I were to ask like my dad's era yeah. about boxing. Um, naturally he says it's a gentleman's sport yeah, yeah? it's yeah. always been known as a gentleman's yeah. sport even though it's it's going to be quite violent yeah. people respect it but if I were to turn around to my dad's era now and say bare knuckle fighting it would be like that's brutal That that, that, that is barbaric almost yeah, yeah. Um, I mean that's not my words and I and I yeah. and I totally respect any fighter from UFC or MMA or bare knuckle or traditional boxing or tie boxing or kickboxing yeah. but I've got to be honest if you've got no padding on and the amount of blood that you can actually shed from these fights I can see why people call it barbaric I mean are you not worried Jamie about like opening up your face and stuff like that or is it something that doesn't phase you I'm trying to not get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to not get it. You know, if you're going to get it, you're going to get cut. You're going to get cut with a boxing glove. But obviously, of course, a lot more damage with a, with, with, with your knuckles. You know, it's going to yeah. tear the skin. But um, no, no, no. I'm, just, I'm trying not to get it. I'm yeah. trying to do the hitting and not get it. <laughs> Fair enough. And I yeah. love that winning mindset. So yeah. have you dabbled unofficially in the bare knuckle world? Uh, yeah, of course. Young depth, but not, not, uh, yeah. yeah. Like a few strainers, but when you're younger, but not, not as uh, not like an official, known as the sport, like yeah. you know. So um, no, yeah, we see. I'm looking forward to it because the the bare knuckle. When I I used to fight down a, a gym called Kettles, which was in Alpington's yeah. um, 
uh, St. Mary's Cray, yeah? And yeah. it was predominantly a uh, MMA stroke Thai boxing gym, but they'd done some boxing down yeah, there. Yeah. And yeah. there was a lot of travellers down there. Yeah, yeah. And I got talking to a few of them, and they used to hand me, this is even before really like yeah, yeah. the social media days, and they used to hand me DVDs of bare knuckle fighting, but in, in on the field with yeah, yeah. like straw around it. Yeah, yeah. And it was the first time I've ever seen that. I was like, this is, <laughs> well, it was very, yeah. very, very addictive to watch because I was watching all these fights all the time. And, the swings of someone was up, and then the other person was up. It yeah, was it yeah, was yeah. really quite brutal yeah. sometimes. Um, did you ever, ever 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 get into it yourself back in the day, or or was no, it just no, on no, the streets? No, no, no. I did. The, obviously, now it's become a sport, but like, uh, yeah, mine was just more like a uh, street. But the, 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 you know, obviously, it's like uh, in a gentleman way. You know, with the the travelling culture, they they sell their arguments that way. You know, and yeah. then they shake hands, or whatever. You know, the traditionally. And, um, you know, it's all come from them really. So, uh, you know, I think, I think, I think it can be getting, I think it gets a, a badder name than what it really is. So, um, you know, I, th- I think with Dave Feldman, the, the CEO of the BKFC, I think now it's going to open up a few eyes and see how, you know, it, you know, it's going to transform it into a quite a major player of a sport, I think. Okay. So... Your your training as a pro boxer, yeah. from an amateur to pro yeah. to, to what you're doing now, what yeah. is a slight variation to it? Well, well, obviously with a boxing, you can hit, you, you know, you can throw not willy nilly, but if you don't hit the target, you ain't gonna damage your hands as bad. Whereas if you if you if, you, if you're hitting someone's elbow with your hand, you, I'm sure you're gonna snap your hand. So you know you you have to pick your shots a lot more careful. You can't just you know you can't just throw willy nilly. And uh, there's a few few. few a few things uh, to to change uh, the aspects in the sport, but uh, the dynamics a bit similar. But but you have to change a few things. Obviously, you're going to get cut a, a little bit more movement. Yeah, because I saw you on the bag even earlier and during the week, yeah. or, or with with just the wraps on. Yeah, I mean, is it is it a bit? I know you've probably done it as a pro boxer yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. and even I've done it occasionally. Yeah. Just just hit yeah. the bag, but. I do feel like my hands are a little bit more flimsy, and if I if I were to miss hit the bag, I could sort of damage my wrist. Yeah. Do you, um, what's that been like? Just sort of hitting the pads and hitting the bag without without a glove on. Uh yeah, I'm, I'm uh they're getting they're getting more conditioned. I think they're just going to get more conditioned as I go on because obviously you use the gloves when you hit the bag. I still use the gloves sometimes now, but wraps change it up, you know, and. Um, yeah, you know, and uh, a good friend of mine, William Joyce, said, dip your hands in petrol. So, uh, yeah, they're going to be rock solid soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, what about the sparring? How do you spar? Oh, uh, yeah, just spar with gloves. Normal, yeah, so, normal yeah, sparring. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so just, yeah, I've just been sparring with gloves. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I think otherwise it'd be too, you know, you save, save that for the fight. Yeah. Yeah. Because even, like you said, even with the gloves, though, you're going to... You, you might go back to your boxing habits, you know, because of because of the pads and because yeah, you know yeah, it's a lot yeah. lot thicker. But the moment that's off and you're hitting against someone's elbows or whatever yeah, else, yeah. you might be slightly training yourself slightly wrong, maybe because of the sparring or or, or not. Yeah, but yeah, it's one or the other. You got to, you you got to use what you got. So um, yeah, because otherwise you start, otherwise you're going to get cut if you didn't. Yeah, and then you won't be able to fight. So yeah, um, yeah. So uh, yeah, we're just I'm just trying to do the best I can to to. With, with what we can with my trainer and what you know so um and everything else is the same so the running the sprinting the weights everything yeah yeah, yeah yeah all the same all the same but we'll, obviously uh we when you're fighting the professional game is three minute rounds and when you get to like championship levels 12 threes whereas this is five twos uh how it starts off as well you start on two lines and you just start banging straight away whereas okay. in boxing you touch gloves come out go back you know and yeah. um yeah so it's a little bit it's in a circle not a square um yeah i was going to ask you this so it's in a circle yeah not in a square is yeah. there any rope yeah 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 all the same like a ring but okay. just uh yeah so um yeah you know it's um it's it's good i'm i, I the, the they had james quinn mcdonough there today the, the the guy i don't know i think there was a big documentary on the 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 the, the, the knuckle and um uh, he was down there to uh, I think David Feldman out in there you know he was a honoree for the sport and you know yeah. so yeah it was um, yeah I think I think it's gonna I think it's gonna get big I think it's gonna propel him to be a major player of the sport soon yeah, yeah. 
So um, on the same card as Michael Venom Page, yeah. um, and you just come from this press conference yeah. where you obviously saw your opponent. Was there any words exchanged to your opponent, or was he very respectful? No, my my opponent wasn't there, so okay. uh, my, my my opponent wasn't there. Uh, I think the only two opponents that were there were uh, Venom Page and um, the uh, guy from the MMA. So um, yeah, I think they, they had a few back and forth. So, yeah. but but it was all good. Is it? Was, it like you said, is quite you know respectful behaviour. So uh, yeah, save it for the fight night. Did did you um, did you speak to Michael Venom Page at all? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Do you know no, him from before or not? No, no, no. I think he's because David A was there as a star guest as yeah. well. And um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, great. You know, he's a great great advocate for for, for sport and um, gentleman. Nice fella. Nice guy. Yeah. Nice yeah. guy. Very confident, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, so he should be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and is he still doing the whole venom, venom thing? This is what oh, he, he does. Did it. I didn't see him do. It. Yeah, yeah, I see. Yeah, but I, did, I didn't see him do it there, though. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite intrigued <laughs> to see how he gets on there. Yeah, he done yeah. really well in his boxing matches, and uh, he's always done very, very well yeah. as a UFC fighter. So, okay, look, you're 35 years of age. Yeah. You definitely got time, even as a as a boxer. You could, you could probably have a few more good years in you, yeah. but. Eventually, we'll, I'm 36 and yeah. I'm still considering maybe back end of the year, start of next year, maybe have a few more boxing fights just to keep me focused. But yeah. really and truly, I mean, how long How long can I can I go on for? So have you got a plan? Like two, three, four, five years you're going to be doing this or you're just going to take it as it comes? Oh, I just want to, with this sport, maybe because it's new, you can sort of fast track and be a world, you know, the world champion in the BKFC. So, you know, that's my goal. And, uh, you know, obviously my age... You know, I ain't got too much time to be on point, and um, so yeah, that's my goal. A few years, fast track it. Try, try to. That's my goal anyway to be become the champion. Otherwise, there's no point being in it. So yeah. uh, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. Who, who's the best in the division for bare knuckle at the moment at your weight? Uh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't know. Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering if there was any the one you got your eyes set on. I'm thinking, you know what? Once I get in a position, I, I reckon I'm going to have this fella. No. Um, no, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't studied too much yet. This, I'm, I'm new to it, it's, so it's uh, yeah. I need to start studying a little bit more and see who's there. But I just put my focus on Kieran Thomas. That's my first hurdle. Then after that, I can start opening my eyes and see who's older. Yeah. Do you know? Going back to your training, is it is it the previous same boxing trainer that you had before, or yeah. have you got new people in? Oh uh, no, no. My trainer's the same. Everything's the same, and uh, he just changed a bit of dynamics on what we're doing. Obviously, the trying to learn look I don't I know nothing about grappling you know and uh, just trying to learn little holds and stuff like that because okay. you can hold behind the head and the little clinches so um, just trying to learn little bits if I can to add to nice. add to my game so um, yeah that's, nice. that's it yeah, that's just good develop all the time so um, if you were to give me a prediction on the fight which is April sorry uh, July the 16th in, in August, Wembley August 20th now it's August 20th now August 20th oh, it's changed because I think they had a uh, move because they're, they're trying to Get the Michael, the MVP fight. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Okay, uh, August then. Uh, if you were to give a prediction, how do you think it's going to go? I'm just looking to win, you know. But and uh, the, these fights, I don't think they go too, too well. And uh, you know, I'm just looking to land land a shot and get the get the job done. So, but but just to get a win, that's my focus. Just to get a win by any means necessary, you know. And uh, yeah, just do it in good fashion. Good stuff. All right. Well, look, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm really pumped and very, very excited to see you back in there. I'm Thanks very, you. very intrigued as well because even though it's very similar to boxing, yeah. there's obviously a lot of differences to make it actually completely different at the same time. Yeah. And I didn't know whether your psychology as a fighter, as a boxer, is going to be different from to, to the bare, to the bare knuckle. Yeah. Um, all the comments I've seen on forums. I mean, even, I was going to read out some earlier, but. I just thought there was no point, but the lot lot of them that I read is Jamie Cox is a really good former pro boxer, and I don't think the bare knuckle people are going to be ready for his intensity as a former pro boxer. Yeah, and I actually do agree. I think the moment you come in as a as this skillful boxer, I'm not saying that all bare knuckle fighters are just brawlers, but some of the fights I have seen before, it seems like that's what they fall into. They start falling into the brawl br- brawling yeah. scenario, and I think if you're Artful, quick, timing. You know, you're you're kind of methodical with yeah. your fight. Yeah. Uh, I think I think there's no there's no reason why you won't you won't become this big force in in the bare knuckle world. Yeah, I'm, you know, they, I, I, that's another thing. I looked. Why I did it is I thought if my style, I think by looking, 
could you know can can make waves there. So um, yeah, if I can use what I can do, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully the because it's fat, it's a bit faster pace, and obviously the rounds are shorter, so you got to try and get in and out as quick as you can. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, Steve. Good stuff. All right. Well, look, um, I want to keep this quite a short and punchy <laughs> podcast. So thank you very much for your time, Jamie. Please subscribe to uh, Watch His Fight. I'm definitely going to be doing the same. And everyone, remember to be happy and never contempt. Thank you very much. Nice Thanks very Jamie. much, Steve. Thanks very much, mate. Cheers, Thank you. Bro. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. much.